respect Wilder? Not as a man, though. No. He's not a man, is he? He's like a spoiled kid. The only thing I respect in Deontay Wilder is his punching power. Nothing else. Not one thing. I don't like him. Don't admire him as a man. He's not one. Before we dive in, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Fury versus Wilder. Oh, yeah. So, is Fury Wilder 3 one of the best fights of all time? Where do you rank it? Listen, it was probably the most exciting, thrilling heavyweight fight seen in recent years, you know, but um, it all boils down to one thing. Tyson can beat men without training because he had three weeks training for that and come through a multitude of problems. So he moved a mountain, wilder box better than he's ever boxed in his entire career. So he's got plenty of plus points out of it. You know, uh, could he have boxed better Tyson? Of course he could. Could he have gone about it different? Yes, he could. But How could he have gone about it different? Well, he, he just could have boxed more. He could have moved more. He could a lot, did a lot of, he could have used his attributes. Tyson didn't use any attribute in that fight, only one, one attribute he used, you know what that was? Heart and bottle mm. and desire to win. You know, because he was taking everything, wasn't he? Mm. He made a dogfight of it, which he could have done in parts, not all of it. Mm. Could have made it an easy, a lot easier 11 rounds than it was. Mm. You know, he walks around to that big shock wave shot. Walks straight onto it, rookie error, moves straight onto it. You know, because, you know, it wasn't a boxing match. And I think there's a lot of needle in the fight, a lot had been said in previous matches, and I think it all got on top of Tyson. Tyson knew he weren't properly fit, he wasn't properly prepared, he just put his he put his armour on and went to war. And turned out that he just Why wasn't it. he fully fit and prepared? Well he never timed, did he? You know, he he, he was training for the first lot, got COVID nineteen. He was out the ring then for a bit. Then when he got back into a little bit of training, his daughter took bad when she was born. That took three weeks out of him. And he never left Alder Hay Hospital till the 5th or 6th of September. And then he fought a month later, four weeks, you know. Mm. Over there to where he went, Vegas, he had jet lag for 10 days. So take 10 days off it, how could you be fit? Mm. When you put it all together and look at the problems he had, there was no way he could win. I knew, I, and I knew this, it was bothering me, but I thought, you know what? You're going to do it anyway, so I'm not going to put a damper on it. I'm going to say you can do it. Because mm. I've always told Tyson, you can beat these men without training. You're that good. You are that good, son. You can beat these men without training properly for them. Mm. Because they haven't got what you possess. That's heart and desire and the will to win. And for me, it was a worrying thing. Because even though we're trying to big him up, he's going to do it anyway. I tried to say to him, leave it. Don't bother. You can't do it. It's impossible. He's been training for 12 months for you. You know, he's, he's made a lot of adjustments, which he did. And I just thought, this is in, this time it's Mission Impossible. I thought, am I being a proper dad by saying do this and do that? I told him straight, I said, Tyson, when he come out of Liverpool, put this back till next year. I didn't want it put back till November or December, next year. He said, Dad, if I got one leg, he said, and one arm, he said, and I had the flu when I was in bad health, I'd be fighting Deontay Wilder. <laughs> well, so on that, let's get to it and do what you can do best, and that's fight. I said, you can fight 12 rounds, no matter how mentally stressed out you are, even if you're not physically that good. And all I did was spar. Spar, that's it. Bit of gym work, that was it for that. Mm. But he's probably the most ill-prepared <laughs> defence of his title you could ever have. Mm -hmm. But it just shows what he's made of. Yeah. You can't keep a good man down. And you can't keep Tyson down. The only way Tyson's kept down, you nail him to the floor. And Brendan Ingle said that about him when he was a kid. He's the only one man beating him, he can nail him on that floor, and I don't see anybody doing it in the, in the near future. And he's proved it. You know, but all those fights and them bombs you keep taking, he's putting miles on the clock. Mm. And that's what I don't like, because he's, he's a great boxer. He doesn't need to get it, but unfortunately, the Kronk style is, you knock them out, or they knock you out. And it's been proven. Mm. And since he's been with a Kronk, he gets it more. You know, and everybody's in the game now. Because yeah. he's easy to hit. Mm. Before he was hard to hit, you couldn't land on him proper, so the weight was out the shot. But the way he's fighting now is very good for the crowd and the paying public. But the longevity of the boxing world in his career, short-lived. You know, because it become a time when you want to detect them shots. And a lesser shot will put you over and keep you over. Because your punch resistance goes mm. where you take that much stick. And that's the only thing I'm bothered about. Mm. Because he's too slick of a boxer, too intelligent. He doesn't need to get it with nothing. But I think he's got it in his head, he's got to please the crowd, which he's done that. You know, but I told him, if you want longevity in this job, you need to box more. 
So if you give up your boxing, what took you to them titles and made you great, all these men are in with a chance because you're easy tit now. Mm. And he is because it's not a boxing display, is it? That last fight, even on top of the mental problems he had, he was injured anyway. His elbows was gone, both of them. He's just had a major operation. As soon as he come back after that fight, he's had surgery on his elbow to remove problems related to them to boxing over the years. I think he had, he's had, he had a bone grown out of his, uh, it's called like spurs, aren't it, where the bone grows out of another bone. He's had to have all that shaved off his arms in a mess. So he was one-armed and he's, he, he was boxing Dante Wilder with a dead arm because he had that many injections, chromosome injections in his arm. So he couldn't feel his arm or else every time he missed the jab, he said, lock out and put him in limp mode. He said, the pain was horrific. He says, I couldn't use the jab proper. It's all I could do is use the short punches up close mm. and make sure I was on target. But that enabled you to get it more. But everything was right on the night. He got the win. It was thrilling. But everything was also wrong, very wrong. You know, he was injured. You know, he was mentally not right. He was physically not right. We could see the shape in him. The fat was bouncing all over on his body, you know. And to be honest with you, it must be shameful on the strength and condition of turning his man out like that really but it's not his fault because no, he had no time to do anything with him mm. he can only do what he had he can only could do what he could do with the time span he had which was very little you know you can see he can win at any given point tyson mm. but no one's superhuman i know he's so showing superhuman powers but it'll all come crashing down if you don't box more but everyone now is in with a chance and everybody's thinking yeah He's slowing down, you know, he's easy to, he's more square on. He is, because that's how he's being trained to knock people out, you know. But a man what can box like him, why not use it mm. and keep yourself in the game a bit longer? Fight when you've got to fight, box when you've got to box. If I had my money, if I was training him, he'd be a box fighter, but I'd do it in spasms. I'd fight in 20 second intervals and then box again. Mm. I'd give him some stick for 15 or 20 seconds, then get back on my bike and box red right off. You know, and keep the head moving, keep the feints going, keep angles left and right all over the ring, what he's good at. But now, what's he good at? Going forward and taking punches and out gaming people, you know, because that's all it is at the minute, but it's working, mm. you know, but listen. How many more fights do you think he's got? He could have one, he could have another ten. I don't know what Tyson, he can't live without the sport of boxing. Mm. It's all, that's his life, you know, take him, give him three weeks out of the gym. And he's lost, he's like an headless chicken. He needs that injection of sport boxing mm. in his life. So he could go on for a long time. I said retired the other day, so you don't need to do anymore, you've won everything. You know, you've got millions of dollars in the bank, you don't need the money, enjoy your spoils of war. But he doesn't enjoy the money, he doesn't enjoy what he's done, he only enjoys the sport of fighting. Mm. Because the rest of it's irrelevant to him, I know it is. You know, he likes being relevant, he likes all that, but it all comes to an end with him. And he starts to want mm. the slog and the thrill of the chase again. Because when Tyson's defending title, he's not like a defending champion. He's like he's trying to win it. Yeah. And that's how you've got to be. And I still see that fire burning bright. Mm. And I'll know when it's not. Mm. But I think it is. Mm. It still is. Do you, you know, a lot more for him to do yet. Yeah. Do you respect Wilder? Not as a man, no. Why not? Because he's horrible. He's not a man, is he? He's like a spoiled kid. I do, the only thing I respect in Deontay Wilder is his punching power. Nothing else. Not one thing. I don't like him. Don't admire him as a man. He's not one. But can he punch? Of course he can. Has he got guts and can ship punishment? Yes, he can. I respect his desire to stay in the game as long as he did. Because he was beat from the fifth round on or fourth round. I know he got the knockdown, but he was still getting beat till he got the knockdown. But after the fourth and the fifth, it showed art and gameness to get to the 11th round with the stick he took. So I admire that part of him and his punching power, nothing else. Mm. There's nothing else to admire, mm. is there? Do you think Wilder respects Tyson? He's got to, even though he don't want to, he does. He's got to because of what's happened to him. He's beaten three times, hasn't he? We well, couldn't make an excuse the third time. No, well, could he? Tip, I thought I was waiting for him, wouldn't you? <laughs> but I think it was a bit too much, the excuses this time. That's to put me off him altogether. Because you know what I thought when I first seen him box, I thought, you know what, you could have a great champion, you. You have to take your time, you get matched right and learn to box a bit better. But you know when I seen the carrying out of him last time, I seen how he handled himself in defeat. 
and that's not a man in my book. It's like a spoiled kid who thought that his ego could never get dented, and he thought there wasn't a man on the planet that could even equal him. But you know, I've seen through all that. Mm. You know, but that's Deontay Wilder. I hope I never have to see or hear him again. That's how I feel about Deontay Wilder. Mm. But can he punch? Yeah. Do I respect that? Yes. Biggest punch of this century. Wow. Yeah. Mm. He's as big a punch as they've ever been. You know, and um, Even like Tyson. I said, yeah. Yeah, he could punch every bit as hard as Mike Tyson him. Believe me, but Tyson delivered his shots differently. But him was a one punch man. Well, just look, Tyson weighed 20 stone on the night. The shot waved straight right through his body. Have you ever seen that before? No. I haven't. You know, he's a big puncher, all right. You know, he's got art. Of course he has. But you know, if he just needs to look in the mirror and tweak his man mannerisms, he get respected more people like me. But who am I? Who am I to disrespect anybody? But I like honour and I like men. And you know what? It shows what kind of a man you are when you get defeated. That's when the truth comes out in your true colours. Mm. When you do take a defeat, it's how you handle it. And I know how my son's handled it. God forbid touch wood, it never happens. But I know how he's been brought up. Good on you, my friend. You're the better man tonight. Good luck. Carry on with your career. All mm. the very best to you. Not like I don't respect you. I don't, I don't respect you as a man or a boxer or a sportsman. I told Tyson, do not go near that man. Don't show him any kind of respect at all, even after the fight. But Tyson, who he is and what he is, he went over to do the manly thing mm. and congratulate him. They both went to war, both took a lot of stick. He thought, you're worthy of handshake, you know, I don't like you. But it just discredited his whole performance, his behaviour after the fight. Mm. And he's done it twice now, hasn't he? Yeah. So what can you say about it? Mm. Nothing good on my brain. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Now, if you like this, we have a full, deep interview, the uncut, unedited version. So if you want to watch that, the link is below. But first, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel.